progressive liberals didn't want me to be here because I'm here to tell you that we should unite our forces. Hungary's Viktor Orban has captivated some American conservatives with his hardline stances on immigration and family values. Democrats become hysterical when you mention the obvious successes that are on display here in Hungary. You've done a good job and you've kept your country safe. But some argue that the culture wars are distracting from Orban's policies eroding democracy. They have always been using a minority as a scapegoat, a very easy way to unite the nation. It is scary that they are making this the rhetoric of the enemy. We just want human rights. He's definitely an autocrat, and he's been an autocrat for years. Raising concerns about what this emerging alliance could say about a conservative vision for America. The globalists can all go to hell. I have come to Texas. Most pedig itt állunk és Magyarország ad helyet a Republikáns Párt, a Grand Old Party legfontosabb politikai gyűlésének. Tisztelt Hölgyeim és Uraim, kezdjük azzal, hogy önöknek, hazájukat szerető politikusoknak van egy olyan problémájuk, amivel mi magyarok már sikerrel megküzdöttünk. A progresszív, liberálisok közéleti dominanciája. Vissza kell vennünk az intézményeket Washingtonban és Brüsszelben. Csinálni kell. Menjünk és csináljunk. Thanks and good luck. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban is the keynote speaker at this Conservative Political Action Committee conference, better known as CPAC. CPAC has served as a barometer for the American conservative movement since 1974, reshaping the GOP post-Watergate and helping to usher in the new conservatism of the Reagan era. This is CPAC's first event in Europe. So there are a ton of booths here, a lot of young people here. Um, I see a uh, booth from the New York Young Republicans, a lot of Hungarian and European think tanks. Never trust the left. And let's go Brandon. So what brings you to Hungary? We think Hungary in a lot of ways is the right country to begin having the CPAC movement be throughout Europe. During his seven-year tenure as CPAC chairman, Matt Schlapp has expanded CPAC's reach around the globe. He's also echoed right-wing conspiracies about Hungarian-American billionaire and left-wing political donor George Soros. I think we all realize that it was the same global entities, in this case George Soros, who's from Hungary, who's done everything he can, in my opinion, to destroy Hungary, just as he's doing everything he can to destroy the America that I love and would like to see. He's a shared enemy. So of course it makes sense to work with our Hungarian partners to push back on these types of, I, I would call, evil forces. What's your response to how that gets depicted in the, in the, in the press? I actually had a member of the press ask me outside. They were like, you know, there's a lot of people that believe that uh, Prime Minister Orban rigged his election. And I was like, really, can you rig an election? I thought that wasn't possible. I thought we'd been lectured to s since election day last year that anybody who would say an election was rigged um, was a conspiracy theorist. Uh, they had a free and fair election here and he won overwhelmingly. Viktor Orban has been labeled an autocrat. Is that, is that a fair depiction of his rule? Well, I think if you define an autocrat as someone that the people can no longer get rid of, even when there are elections, he's definitely an autocrat, and he's been an autocrat for years. Kim Lane Shepley is an expert in Hungarian constitutional law and critic of Orban's rule. You look from afar, and the question is asked, how can this person be an autocrat when he got more votes than he has ever gotten. We're so used to thinking of autocracy 20th century style, right, where the dictator comes to power, you know, the coup, the tanks in the streets. We're used to that as autocracy, okay? 21st century autocracy doesn't look like that. Basically, with 21st century autocracy, what you do is you design the rules so that when people show up to play their bit roles in what looks like a democracy, the results will always wind up going to the leader that you can't get rid of. When first elected in 2010, Orban's center-right Fidesz party gerrymandered the country. For the 2022 election, The Economist calculated Fidesz would only need 43% of the vote to control parliament, while the opposition would need 
A single two-thirds vote is needed to amend the Constitution, and Fidesz has maintained a supermajority almost every year since 2010. In the U.S., when there is a gerrymander, the aggrieved party can usually take the gerrymander to the courts, and then the courts look it over. Well, Orban captured the courts, and besides, the district boundaries in Hungary are actually written into a law. You'd have to pass something like a constitutional amendment to move the district one block to the west. So nobody can change it, and the courts can't review it. So basically, he gerrymanders the whole country at once, doesn't have to have equal district sizes, takes out judicial review, and then he says, it's just like what you do in the US, and the answer is no, it isn't, it isn't at all. A senior judge at the Budapest Metropolitan Court said that Orban's government is, quote, constantly overreaching its authority. And he and his colleagues have witnessed, quote, external and internal influence attempts for years. A 2022 report said the Fidesz party also has, quote, largely solidified control over domestic media. But has Viktor Orban done anything illegal? Everything Orban does is legal. That's the whole point. Uh, it's not about legality anymore. That's why I think we need to kind of think about, yeah, but is the law, should that, is, should that be what the law is, you know? So what Orban did was he rewrites laws that are inconvenient. Can he accuse Prime Minister Orban of being an autocrat or sliding toward autocracy, namely through his use of gerrymandering, control over the court, as well as control over the media? How, how does the government respond? Well, in a very simple way, uh, it was the fourth consecutive victory since 2010, this uh, April, with uh, an ever-growing support behind the government, actually, in a fully democratic way, by all standards, uh, by all observers, uh, that uh, Mr. Orban has won the elections. In the case of Hungary, nobody can question the democratic legitimacy, the mandate that has been given. So any accusation, any charge you just mentioned, is basically a simple political motivation um, and the expression of the dislike uh, that there is a center-right conservative government uh, in Hungary. Look who we ran into, someone who has agreed to fly all the way over. At CPAC Hungary, American conservatives praised Orban, like 2016 presidential candidate Rick Santorum and political commentator Candace Owens, and some young members of right-wing groups, like Texas lawyer Mark Ivanio, see Orban as a model for conservatives in the U.S. Hungary has often been called the anti-woke paradise. Does that, like, jive with what you're seeing here? Yes, it does. Uh, low crime, it's clean, uh, it's a beautiful city, buildings are maintained. So that's proof that it's working, it's functioning, and the society is great. You've heard all the critiques about Orban. He's basically an autocrat, he's a strong man, he's He's done away with democracy. Is that still the model that you want to follow in the U.S.? Yeah, I think we saw a great example of it in President Trump. Uh, I don't think he is any of those things you mentioned that he's been cr criticized of being. But similarly, I think uh, Prime Minister Orban is being accused of all kinds of things simply because he doesn't toe that liberal line. You know, he stands for Christian conservative values. He'd still be called a homophobe, a racist, sexist. Uh, dictator, etc. Just because you are a strong man, you have a commanding presence, and you look out for your people's interests. They have always been using a minority as a scapegoat. That's basically a very easy way to unite the nation when you appoint an enemy that they can be afraid of. Lutza Duditz works for the Hater Society, an LGBTQ plus advocacy organization in Budapest. So you, you, you think that some of these, these prejudices are sort of baked into society? Well, I think they are using um, framings or they're reusing patterns that have been working. The Hungarian parliament has just passed a law in the past few minutes that bans what is described as the promotion and portrayal of homosexuality and gender reassignment among those under 18. The right-wing government of Prime Minister Viktor Orban says the law, similar to one enforced in Russia, protects children from gay propaganda. Nine months later, a similar bill passed in Florida. Today we will sign HB 1557, the Parents' Rights and Education Bill. Nine months after Hungary's anti-LGBTQ bill passed, banning LGBTQ instruction under 18, a similar bill was passed in Florida. 
Known by critics as the Don't Say Gay Bill, it banned LGBTQ education for kids in third grade and younger. Disney, one of Florida's largest private employers, criticized the bill and paused political donations. In retaliation, DeSantis revoked Disney's special tax status, a move that critics say mirrors Orban's tactic of using economic coercion as punishment for dissent. The playbook is here. You can see all the pieces of it. And there's a lot of ways in which the U.S. particulars are different than the Hungarian particulars. But I think the big takeaway is that we tend to think of a coup, right, as happening with tanks in the streets, you know, and the military takeover and the, the announcement on radio that, you know, all civil liberties have died. That's not what autocracy looks like anymore. You don't get, you don't get phalanxes of tanks. You get phalanxes of lawyers. And the lawyers show up they figure out how to refigure power. Disney World was given all these kinds of special privileges by the state of Florida. He just pulls them when Disney comes out as the woke company defending LGBTQ rights. What these new autocrats learn is that you just, you just hit people with changing the tax code. You don't have to arrest them. The best strategy in the immediate term is the siege of the institutions. Um, and that we should prepare for the fight. I tend to think that we should seize the institutions of the left and turn them against the left. Drop the phrase, drain the swamp. This is beyond that. This is taking on and defeating and deconstructing the administrative state. We're gonna do that. Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Mark Ivano. I'm the executive director of Republicans for National Renewal. And welcome to the future of Western renewal. Following CPAC Hungary, young conservatives gathered in Budapest to network at an event hosted by Ivanio's organization and two youth wings of European conservative parties. So the question is, should we reduce mass migration and what is its impact on your nation? Well, uh, simple answer, yes. There is a, a move uh, by left-wing governments, left-wing activists across the world uh, to basically import voters into their society, uh, depreciate native workers' wages, uh, and completely gut the cultural institutions and traditions of that nation. It directly threatens the survival of Estonians as a distinctive group. Budapest is the only city that you can see actual Hungarian people in the streets. We're trying to do it in the same policy in Israel, and uh, it's really impressive. Um, let's talk about people who got in our countries illegally. I just have one message, and it's return to sender. So this is the border fence. On the other side is Serbia. It was constructed in 2015, a year when over 390,000 refugees and asylum seekers entered Hungary during the height of the migrant crisis. Orban has drawn a hard line on immigration issues. És azt szeretném, hogyha Magyarország nem válna bevándorló országá, és nem szeretném, hogyha a migráció megerősödne Magyarországon. Ez nem fai kérdés a mi számunkra, ez kulturális kérdés. Egész egyszerűen a civilizációnkat úgy akarjuk föntartani, ahogy az most van. To quell illegal immigration, Hungary built a 13-foot fence along the entirety of its 100-mile border with Serbia, a non-European Union country. Has the issue of immigration become sort of politicized and what sort of an impact does that have on, on what you do here? Hát, alapvetően én azt gondolom ez nem engem, érint, nem engem, nem engem érintő kérdés. A rendőrség az tulajdonképpen ö, jogszabályt alkalmaz és a jogszabályban leírtakat ö, hajtja végre. Tehát aki illegális módon nem a határát kelő helyeken lépi át az államhatárt, úgy a magyar rendőrség a mindenkor hatályos jogszabályok szerint jár el. So where, where are you from? I am from Afghanistan. My name is Asif. Mm -hmm. I am living in Serbia from one year. One whole one year? Yeah, because Hungaria border too much close, too much camera, too much police. When police catch people and too much hit him, and take telephone and take money, everything. Did you try to cross? Yeah, so what? five, four times we cross and police catch and deport back to Serbia. And have you been um, hit or 
hurt by the police? Yes, yes, so many times police hit me and took my telephone, took my money, took my old stuff and didn't give back. What would happen if you went back to Afghanistan? All world knows what happened in yeah. Afghanistan. Yeah. Afghanistan situation, no good, mm -hmm. no peace. Prominent American conservatives have commended Orban for a strong stance on border policy. Victor Orban has uh, done a tremendous job in so many different ways, highly respected, respected all over Europe. Uh, probably like me, a little bit controversial, but that's okay. That's okay. You've done a good job and you've kept your country safe. The Hungarian government protects its border because it wants to protect its citizens. That's the basic role of government. It's not a radical concept. It used to be commonplace across the world, especially in the United States. And now it's not. In 2022, Doctors Without Borders said since January 2021, they've treated hundreds of refugees who allege they've experienced violence at the hands of Hungarian authorities, including beatings, harassment, and being urinated on. So our police guards act accordingly. Uh, they are supposed to defend the border, uh, and that is uh, to thwart, to stop any illegal border crossings. It was around 2019 that the, that the panic um, around the refugee crisis really died down. You could see that also uh, Trump and, uh, and uh, Bolsonaro in Brazil and also Putin kind of uh, moved away from the refugee crisis. The right wing uh, in those countries started to focus on LGBTQI people. Hello. Hi, Hi I'm Adam. Hi. A financial auditor by day and a drag queen by night, Kasava moved to Hungary in 2012 and lives with his American partner. I moved here because I've been visiting uh, the capital uh, a couple of times since I'm Hungarian and uh, I just liked the freedom that was here at that time. The government started to change the constitution, banning same-sex marriage. You stayed for 10 years then. I know, right? <laughs> so what's kept you here? I was involved in trying to give to the community and hopefully things would get better. Um, it's quite recently that I, I just realized that it's completely hopeless after the last elections. I don't see any way that the current government would lose in the next 10 years. So you're actually actively thinking about leaving? Yes, yes I am. Comes to my mind a couple of it's either I invest decades of my life in a country where I'm a second grade citizen in hopes of things getting better, or I already start now investing in another country, in another home. Do you, do you, feel, do you feel unsafe? Safety, of course, is, is a concern. I mean, I do hold my boyfriend's hand while we're walking, but we do get some shouting sometimes. And I do hear people getting beat up on the streets because they're gay. Wow. <laughs> you know, you're sort of seen as like a threat to society. What do you, what do you think of that? I don't think the people who are saying this on stage believe that, but it is scary that they are making this the, the rhetoric of, mm -hmm. of the enemy. We just want human rights, not it's mm -hmm. who we are, and it should not be politicized. What's up, man? How you doing? Good to see you. How you doing, man? I'm well. So I'd love to get a sense from you as you walk around uh, and, and look at the different booths. What's what's sort of sticking out to you? I think uh, there's definitely a good sentiment for the country. I mean, you see a lot of American flags, um, a lot of America first stuff that maybe you wouldn't have seen even a couple of years ago. 
Uh, I think the, the message of the populism or nationalism is really growing. People are less scared to support it openly. You know, as you, as you walk around and talk to people, what are you seeing as some of the, the similarities and the differences between here and, and Budapest? As far as the views of the people go, I think the, the grassroots here are very much in line with uh, our message, America First, and they very much appreciate Prime Minister Viktor Orban and his message. If you ask Americans who, let's say, lionize Viktor Orban, mm -hmm. what they'll talk about is his stance on immigration, his fight against wokeness, cancel culture. Is the culture war component of his support simply a smokescreen? It's a distraction from the legal changes happening under the surface, but it's important because these days, you know, you have to run on a platform. You gain allies by having these kinds of culture wars in common. So you can see that one of the links between the U.S. Republican Party and Orban is that they're fighting the same culture wars. Thank you, everybody. It's fantastic to be here in Texas. We have to be brave enough to address even the most sensitive questions, migration, gender, and the clash of civilizations. In Hungary, we had to build not just a physical wall on our borders and the financial wall around our families, but a legal wall around our children to protect them from the gender ideology that targets them. To sum up, the mother is a woman, the father is a man, yeah. and leave our kids alone. Full stop. End of discussion.